This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. You reach out to grab the tie, but what's this? Diffuse, radiating chest pain. Doom comes over you. You feel something in your chest, an unnatural pressure. It's spreading to your left arm, your jaw. Very, very bad. This is the end, bad. All you feel is pain and weakness. You have to surrender now. We all do. It gets so dark. You don't even see her face, like you always thought you would. You only see pain and fear. Cop suffers final heart attack. A detective lieutenant of the RCM passed away yesterday. His death, though abrupt, did not come as a surprise to those who knew him. He was the heaviest drinker I'd ever met. Captain Ptolemy Price, the deceased superior officer, commented, that ain't easy on the ticker. He loved his liquor, sure, said Detective Chester McLean, friend and colleague. But I think before he ever had a heart attack, his heart was broken. According to an official statement given by the RCM, the officer was on the brink of solving a murder case. He has no respect for you personally, but this man sees himself as a law-abiding citizen, and you a representative of that law. Let's go. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. No one is saying the multi-pattern necktie you found tied to the ceiling fan can talk. No one. It must be merely imagination. But... Let's bail! Time to push the eject button! Sounds like a responsibility! You don't like those! One moment you're running like the wind, then you've suddenly turned around and are giving him the finger, furiously, with both hands. That's true, yes, and it's worrying. But let's not fixate on it. Look at that stupid bartender instead. He has no idea what's going on. You and your fuck you fingers floating in the air. Barkeep's got his mouth agape like an idiot. Watch out! Everything goes dark. Back so soon. Admit it. You just missed the quarter light. The darkness on the edge of town. I was wrong to let you go. I should have kept you here. Is it bright where you are? Is it terrifying? Have you felt... The love. That is too bad. We all need a little love. Are you okay? You feel something in your chest. An unnatural pressure. It's spreading to your left arm. Your jaw. Very very bad. There's no shame in Sir Cop Suffer's final heart attack, a detective lieutenant of the RC. Yeah, lawman. Why don't you? It's almost an anthropological sight, watching him try to assert dominance over you. Not in the arresting mood? By your side, the lieutenant keeps his hand away from his holster. You hear the nylon of his coat hiss as he steps closer, 
While the little rat-faced man reaches into his sleeve, there's a knife in there. Some of the others reach for their belts. Their eyes are light. Look, coppers. I know you think you're doing your job here, but there are seven of us and two of you. That's an Easter 50, a Ziemsk-made monstrosity. It'll blow your head clean off. The last thing you hear is a little murmur. Not a blast, not an echo. No one screams. It's a more dead cop. Sad news from the district of Martinez, as the bodies of two police officers are found floating in the canal. It is believed the officers were pursuing a murder investigation, but got caught in the dock workers strike and were gunned down under unclear circumstances. Such needless loss of life is truly tragic. A local union leader, Everard Clare, commented and added that although the event is truly horrid, we can expect similar incidents to follow if right-wing vigilantes are allowed to run around uncontrolled and try to wriggle their way into well-organized neighborhoods. In your hands you hold 16 Days of Coldest April by Yekatina Dahl. The cover image shows a row of concrete apartments above which span a black and white rainbow. Indeed, the book is unusually heavy in your hands, as though the cover were lined with lead. You flip through the book, the pages are thinner than you realized, and the type quite small and tightly set. It's nearly 600 pages long. Real art is dense and difficult. If it didn't feel like you had to wrestle a suicidal bear to get through it, you weren't really reading. The back cover is dominated by a black and white photograph of the author. She can't be much older than her mid-thirties in this photograph. And yet, from this cover, the eyes of a sad old woman stare back at you. In cold, detached prose, the author describes a scene from one of the Yugo Grad riots in the 20s. Youths overturn motor carriages and set trash cans ablaze, while heavily armored guardsmen dash in and disperse them in a flurry of baton blows. The Yugo Grad riots took place from 27 to 29. Fueled by ethnic unrest and the state's repressive tactics, these events are often seen as marking the end of a brief period of liberalization known as the Yugograd Spring. Like all such periods, it is frequently memorialized in art and literature. As ethnic tensions run wild, a pair of young lovers meet each other on the street. Somehow, in the middle of all the chaos, they manage to lock arms and look into each other's eyes. It would physically hurt you to keep reading, are you sure? They go through a brief and somewhat awkward love affair, and in the end, they betray You feel something in your chest, an unnatural pressure. It's spreading to your left arm, your jaw. No, it's many years of combined self-neglect and self-abuse. All you feel is pain and weakness. You have to surrender now. We all do. It gets so dark, you don't even see her face, like you always thought you would. You only see pain and fear. Cop suffers final heart attack. A detective lieutenant of the RCM passed away yesterday. His death, though abrupt, did not come as a surprise to the...